So you know that you only get one chance to make a first impression. And that's really important when it comes to making an impression on an investor or a customer. And the first impression that you actually make is usually answering the question, who are you and what do you do? Now, many entrepreneurs I've run into have no idea how to answer the second question. Every one of you can answer, who are you? But answering what you do in a compelling way that's memorable, that gives people a reason to ask you to tell them more, is not so common. So I'd like to share with you now a tool that's the cornerstone to all the coaching I give to people. It's what I call five in one. Five tools all in one that will help you stand out. And it's really quite simple. You'll never forget it as long as you live. It's S-A-M-E. If you just remember this word, you'll never sound the same as any speaker ever again. Except it gets a little bit more complicated. There are two S's. And the way this works is as follows. The number one tool for captivating anyone's attention or getting them interested in listening to what you have to say is the first S. And I know you're probably going to say, I've heard this before, but this is truly the way to captivate anyone's attention. It's with a story. Now, I know you might know this from the past, but most people in business are not using stories effectively. If you need inspiration on where to come up with stories, my suggestion to you is to go visit TED.com and take a look at how other people are presenting their wildly inspirational and amazing technologies and lessons in life. So when you sit down to actually tell your story, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out story. Craig Wartman has done a set of videos on what's your story and you should really reference that. And I suggest right now, if you haven't watched it, you should go watch it now and learn how to create your own story matrix. So that way, as you build the stories for your company, you'll be able to add them into these boxes. And then whenever you have to do a presentation, you just pick out the stories that you want to use, put them together, and you now have a great story. The best part of stories, they will get repeated. And the best part of stories getting repeated is when you present to an investor, when you leave, they might just repeat part of your story to their partners or to another group of people while you're not there. The next letter takes the next S. And that is when you use statements like, how did you sleep last night, Nathan? I slept like a baby. And how was the hotel? Well, the bed was like sleeping on a bed of feathers. And if you haven't figured it out yet, that S stands for simile. When you use similes in business to help people really understand what you do, no matter how complex, using statements that include the word like or as, they will get it. We do this in life all the time, but we forget in business to use similes. We'll make it really easy for people to understand what the heck you're talking about. The next has a story. The A in same comes from a story where I asked a CEO, what do you do? And he responded by saying, Nathan, I am the CEO of a company that is building a wildly exciting product. We do for surfing what the chairlift does for snow skiers. And he paused. And he said, you know, the problem with snow skiing is getting to the top of the mountain and the chairlift fixes that problem. Well, the problem with surfing is getting out to the waves. And now, instead of doing this 90% of the time when you're surfing, now you can get ahead of the wave or get out to the waves using a surfboard that has an electric built-in motor. But using the A, which is an analogy, he was able to show us how what they do for surfing is analogous to something in skiing, and it helped us and everybody in the room completely understand what they're talking about. The M has a story also. At the IBM Smart Camp in San Francisco two years ago, there were 12 presenters that came up to the front of the room to present. Presenter number one went up and went blah, 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 blah. The second presenter goes up and blah, 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 blah. Now, they were good presentations, but the fourth person stood up and said, we're really excited to be here because we want to share with you our machine that turns water into money. And you should have heard the room. 300 people in the room were laughing, smiling, chuckling, wondering, what is this machine that turns water into money? And then right up on the screen, he shows us a video of a machine about so big that has turbines on the outside edges with flappers in the middle. You throw that into a rushing waterway, tie it off to the side, and you plug it in, and now you're generating free electricity. So does he literally turn water into money? Of course not. 
but he's using a metaphor, and that's what the M in same stands for. Using a metaphor to help people understand what you're doing in business is so powerful, it might be the only thing they remember. Out of all the presentations that day, people still today are saying, did you see the guy who makes a machine that turns water into money? And you can come up with similes, analogies, and metaphors for your complex businesses as well. And finally, the E. E stands for examples. And this is where most people go to when they're trying to get people to understand what they do. And while examples are good, it's on the last letter of the word. It just so happens to be perfect because it's the last place I really want you to go to when you have something you're trying to get somebody to understand the value of. But if you used an example that used a simile, an analogy, or a metaphor, that would be much, much better. So there is no business on the planet that is so complex that you can't use a simile, an analogy, or a metaphor to help anyone, no matter what language they speak, understand the value of what you do.